In this video, I'm going to do a quick review of some of the instructions I've written for making your very own Raspberry Pi pump room leak and temperature monitoring setup. So our goal here is to take some cheap temperature and humidity sensors along with the Raspberry Pi camera and set them up so you can remotely monitor something like a pump room or uh, check for leaks. Before we get started, it's worth noting you can use the pinout command to check the pin assignments on the Raspberry Pi when you're wiring up your sensors. Okay, so this video is just to show you the wiring that I used, which is successful, and this is exactly how I had it wired up when I wrote the blog post that you see linked below. So uh, this is the output of the Raspberry Pi pinout command. So I have arrows associated with things that I have connected, and in the exact same perspective, so you see right there in the corner, this red wire, that's the 3.3 volt there in the corner. And just under that, the next pin that's connected is ground, which is this white one. And the gray one is GPIO pin 17. That is for the DHT11 temperature and humidity sensor. So here's what it looks like from the other side. So here we have ground, and just next to that, GPIO pin 14. And once again, there are no pull-up resistors used on the DS18B20. We use the internal pull-up resistor on the Raspberry Pi, which is enabled through software control. So now let's test the DHT11 sensor. All right, we're getting readings from that. Now let's test the DS18B20 sensor. So this is all code pulled directly from the blog post that you'll see linked in the description. All right, we're getting readings from that too. So let's test if the email sending works. Oh, I have to uh, make sure I change the email addresses. So I'm gonna be sending from info at robertelder.org. And I'll be sending to robert at robertelder.org. All right, it's sent, and now I can check my mail inbox. Okay, and here's an example of what that email looks like. Now let's do a quick demo of uploading an image to an S3 bucket. So we'll take a, an image with Raspberry Still. And we'll just copy and paste the code from a blog post. And if we don't see any error messages output, that means it worked. And to check if that worked, you can just go to HTTPS, the bucket name, .s3, .amazon, AWS, slash, and then the name of the file you uploaded. And this is just a picture uh, taken of some junk on my desk, so it worked. And one extra thing that was necessary was to set some permissions so that all objects in this given S3 bucket are public. If we don't do this, we won't be able to see the images through a web browser. And run this command to make it public. And before any of the Amazon Web Services stuff will actually work, we need to set the credentials file. So here's an example of what the credentials file contains. This is a realistic example of real credentials. These are actually not my real credentials, but I just wanted to give you an example of what it looks like pretty closely. This phrase up here is effectively the username associated with this. So you can have different credentials with different profiles and each of them can have different permissions. So for example, we could have something like this where we have multiple users and each one of these has different permissions. 
And for each of the API commands with Amazon Web Services, you can specify a, a different profile, and it'll just look it up in that credentials file. OK, now that we have all the prerequisites working, we can copy and paste the example program at the end of the blog post. What you'll want to update is the profile name, because yours will probably be different. You'll need to change the bucket name for sure. You'll need to change the sender email address and the email address you want to receive it at. Once you update that, you can run it directly from the command line just like this. And you can automate it by using a cron job. I skipped a lot of steps in this video demo, but if you want to see the full instructions on how to set up your S3 bucket, the permissions, and sending emails through Amazon SES, you can find all of the details in my blog post.